Death Wish Coffee presents Fueled by Deathcast, the world's strongest podcast. With your hosts, the incredible Jeff and the amazing D Man. This is the starting point to line this up. If you can see both of us, which I think you can. Fine. Yeah. Up. Mine. Up. All right. Mine. <laughs> That's how you start a podcast. <laughs> Um, this might work, this might not. Uh, so, we are about to embark on our first uh, spectacular of the year. And w- <laughs> you can't have a better place to start it than New Jersey. That's, <laughs> that's what we've been told. Everybody in this business goes, you know, if you're going to do a spectacular episode, you go to New Jersey. If, you, if you're going to make a kid, you got to go to New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're in the car on the way down. Um, what's very exciting is, is that... We have partnered with our good friend Ming Chen and Mike Zapsik, um, who have just opened up their own podcast studio, a shared universe podcast studio. And I think it's such a great idea because um, it it basically embodies everything podcasting is all about, which is anybody can do it. You know. Well, I like I, I even like the name, a shared universe. Yeah. Like that's ah, that's such a great way to look at it. As like, there's there's room for everybody to podcast and succeed. It's all of a, a shared universe of geeks and people yeah. who don't know how to shut up. Yeah, you know, you know it's it, they, they set it up for people just learning, just starting out, people who already have a show. A lot of their shows they're doing out of there. And Deathwish Coffee is going to be a big part of it. And obviously, Fueled by Deathcast. So we're going down to have our inaugural recording down there and uh, also do some other fun stuff in the area because they're right down the road from Jay and Silent Bob's Secret Stash where Ming and Mike both not only work but also film AMC's Comic Book Men. Um, I like how we're going to Jay and Silent Bob's Secret Stash right now and Mike's going to be working. I, like working. I imagine behind the desk of the place. It's 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 very authentic. It'll be like our very own episode of AMC's Comic Book Men. We just have a we just need a shitty comic to try to get priced out or something. <laughs> yeah, <you know>? yeah. <laughs> we should have brought one. No, just see what they'll give you for me. Nothing. No. <laughs> well, fine. Get out. Get That's out. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, we'll talk more obviously on the episode about Everything behind the shared universe idea, the the new studio that Mike and Ming have, a little bit about the secret stash, and maybe we'll get into some more fun and trouble, and who knows? But uh, I'm excited. Tacos. Tacos. I'm excited for our first spectacular episode of season two, and uh, here's to many more. Cheers, as Dustin would say. I'm gonna kill us both. <laughs> Just run us off the road. <laughs> That's why. Oh, Perfect. Man. Okay, folks, I'm swallowing right. my gum right now. That that really bugs people out there. Like, you swallow your gum? Really? You swallow your gum? Oh yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> it's like protein. a thing. <laughs> Why not? It's, it's like... not protein. <laughs> Don't tell me what it's not. I can... Let's. But <laughs> you know what? When it goes down, it like grabs stuff and. Yeah. Oh. Beautiful. You should uh, write a book all about like the bubble gum cleanse. Yes, the bubble well, can gum Can you hand cleanse. me the uh, bottle of water right there, Absolutely. sir? Absolutely. Thank you very much. So here we are. We're live with the we are live. guys. Come on, we're here. This is this is momentous. It yeah, is. Th- this is the moment <clears throat> we've all been waiting for. Yeah, I mean, look, like I've been saying all day, I am so happy for you guys with a shared universe. Oh, it's thank you so just much. Just so awesome. It's such a great idea, um, and I think it's exactly what the podcasting world needs. Thank you. You know what? This was an idea, and uh, we had been talking uh, before when we were smoking cigars. Mm. And um, so good. Yes, good cigars. Ashton's, <laughs> Ashton Senior. Yeah. Uh, let's give them a plug. Maybe they'll yeah. send me a couple of <laughs> yeah, cases. Right. <laughs> and boys, I share the wealth. Oh, yeah, good. So, it's good. Right. so um, how shared universe came about? Yes, please. I want to hear this story. Okay, so we had a, a friend of ours. His name is Todd Puma. Mm-hmm. And uh, Todd Pumo is, um, he essentially does stuff like this. He puts in home video and home audio and home everything. Okay. He's um, 
with Crestron. I've Have you heard, ever heard? I've heard of Crestron. Crestron is very high level. They will come in and they will hook your your entire house up. Oh, that's they've, cool. They've got a thing going on with um, Alexa. They're they're oh. like, ah, so yeah. they like pretty much wire your house up to be automated kind of thing. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, like okay, the house cool. house of the future. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> live like Bill Gates. Exactly. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> live like Bill Gates on a Mike Zapsic budget. <laughs> so. Uh, essentially, uh, he came in. He's like, listen, we want to do something for the stash. You know, we think it'd be really cool to have our stuff in here and, you know, get some high visibility. And so we said, sure, that'd be great. Yeah. And so he came in. And uh, while he had a technician doing all the, you know, the wiring, mm-hmm. he he and I were just sitting around shooting the, shooting the, the dookie. Yeah. And uh, he said, what do you want to do? Essentially, what do you want to do when – Comic book men sunsets, and you know, God forbid, Jay and Silent Bob's uh, decides to close the door. What do you want to do? It's right. kind of like the question you ask a fighter if he's been punched a few too many times. Exactly. And you're like, I, I want to go to Disney World. <laughs> um, but my, the, he said, don't even think about it. Just tell me. And I said, I would love to start a podcast studio. I said, I, I love to podcast. Yeah. Podcasting is, and you boys know, it yeah. gets addictive. It yeah. really. So you could, I mean, four o'clock in the morning, you're like, you know what? I can't sleep. I got all this crap in my head. You go downstairs, you record it. Yeah. And you get that crap out. Yeah. You don't have to put it up, but at right. least it's out there. Yeah. So I said, I would love to open a podcast studio. And he's like, well, why don't you? And I said, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, Todd, you card. <laughs> I said, I don't have, you know, however much money it's going to take to you know, just plunk down and, and, you know, get it out there. He said, sometimes it doesn't take money. All it takes is an idea and to, to throw it out there. Throw it out to the universe and see what comes back to you. Yeah. So I, I say like, that all the time, right? You really do. So and, and that's a lot of what I live by now. You just got to you have to say it out loud. Yes. You know, you have to give it legs, mm-hmm. you know, and then it'll start running, mm-hmm. you know. Definitely. So we were at the secret stash, and I don't know if you guys took a walk around Red Bank. Yeah, a probably little bit. a little, a little bit. bit. Yeah. Well, we little... did the first time we came to well, the secret stash way years back ago. in the day. But yeah. today, yeah, we did a couple blocks. Okay. Yeah. A little bit further down, there's this building that would be perfect. It's a uh, three levels, and they're all three of them are accessible from the outside. And I said, Todd, do you think your guy can just handle it without us for a couple minutes? He's like, yeah, Jason knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. You know. So let's let's go. I, I took him down. I said, this this would be it. Yeah. This and it's like all glass fronted. And I said, inside there, we could split these up into dedicated tiers for people who. Um, I, I, I had another idea. Which let me throw this out. There. Yeah. It's a drive-in movie club. All right. Where it's it's two drive-in movie theaters. Uh-huh. Where you actually come in, you drive in, and uh, people pay a fee. Yeah. And it's like a beach club. Oh, oh that's smart. Yeah. I like it. People pay like for a season like a thousand bucks, and they can go to one movie a week. Yeah. You know, and you go in there, and we have it all nights. I like and that a lot. In the middle of the drive-in movie theater, I would have a – and this is – anybody out there who steals my idea, I will uh, hunt you down and kill you. I always uh, yeah, uh, preface your, it with uh, uh, hashtag copyright. Hashtag, Pat pending. Yeah, hashtag copyright. No, hashtag we're copyright. Good. We're good. Yeah, there, we're good. Um, and in the middle <laughs> is – Can't take it now. In the middle would be a snack bar, but a gourmet snack bar. Yeah. And up at the top, you can go and you can eat up there and watch movies either side. Because so, they would be two movie theaters, but right, you know, opposite ends. Yeah, like going foot to head, head yep. to foot. So uh, that was my first idea. You know, I, I'm like, I have these ideas. I just yeah. don't have any money to implement them. <laughs> and um, you know, do like all the the refreshments at a like popcorn crusted chicken. Yeah, you know, mm. stuff like that. Oh yeah, just get a real chef in there yeah. to make these things that 
milk duds for like real milk duds. Oh man, I'm telling you, I'm like so for excited. dessert and stuff. Yeah, like milk duds this big. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm so excited. With chocolate I want that. I want over. The, I want How long would that there. take to eat a milk dud that big? <laughs> two minutes. Two yes, minutes. Two, oh. two and a half minutes. We've timed it. <laughs> um, and uh, so I'm, I'm like, this is like an outstretch of what my that that idea was. Yeah. This is like the the next logical step is well if you're in my head mm-hmm. that's the next logical step because <laughs> yeah. wait, wait a minute drive in theaters and podcasting what the hell do they have to do with each right. other right doesn't matter shut up just follow my train of thought <laughs> got it uh get in I, the car kid we're going <laughs> exactly <laughs> Ooh, careful you don't want to say that too loud um but um this building was perfect for our needs like down below would be a cigar bar yeah uh-huh. and they have it's like underneath and then there's the the first floor, which we could split up into six separate and dedicated podcast stations for people who come in and, and want to like, hey, I'll I'll do it for a year, right? You know, and pony up the the dough. Like here's five grand for, and they can decorate it however they want. So that that was my idea. And then like the top would be our offices, and yeah. there was a fourth floor, or th- actually third floor up, which would be. Um, what I would I'd love to do is like turn it into like two guest suites for like podcast guests. Ooh. Like people, you fly in Robert De Niro or something. Right, yeah. stay up there. Right, that's yeah. Perfect. Apartments for perfect. For, I know, yeah. but unfortunately, the building is like one point seven million dollars. Ah. not with the reservations. I mean, it's like bare bones. Yeah, but I'm like, this would be. You want to know what my dream is? That's my dream. There you go. I love that. Yeah, and yeah, I think that would be fantastic. So this is the first step. This is our first step to global domination. I love it. <laughs> I love it. And um, so, and so we went, we looked, we found out that it was one point seven million dollars. Yeah, like, yeah. Hey, how are we gonna get this one point seven million dollars? Like, do you know any backers? I'm like, no. So there That's was a lot of con appearances. It's oh my, more than we get. <laughs> trust me, in like two lifetimes, <laughs> even Ming and me having two lifetimes. Um, so my. The, our next logical step was to find even a small space. Right. So um, we did. We found a very small space in a building not a three-minute walk from the stash. Right. Right. So it was on a side street, and um, there was a film festival that was in there that moved out. Mm-hmm. And uh, Rob Bruce was, was our neighbor, which was kind of scary, <laughs> too. Uh, I was going like, to say, I, I'd be a little scared. But I was very scared. Yeah. Yeah. Who's Rob Bruce? <clears throat> You've never met him. Okay. You'd know it if you did. Okay. Oh, yeah. You you would <laughs> rue the day. Yeah. So, oh, 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 I think I've heard of stories. Yeah. Okay. Got okay. It. So anyway, sorry. Yeah. I, th- I don't want to make this yeah, about Robert. No, sorry. No. Sorry. Sorry, <laughs> sorry Rob. Need to derail the conversation. <laughs> no, that's okay. So, um, <laughs> we we moved in there, and uh, Todd actually he said, "Listen, I need a place to. You know, I need a New Jersey address. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm going to rent this place, and we were like, "Well, hold on a second there, Todd." He's like. No, don't worry about it. I'm I'm gonna rent this place. Uh, I'll be here like one day a week. You guys podcast out of here, right? Uh, he signed a lease with this guy. There was a there's an old dude who walks around Red Bank, and this is he claimed that this was his place. Okay. And uh, Rob said, "Yeah, that's the guy who owns the the building." So we're like, "Okay." So we started very slowly moving in there because it was like this is. Very weird, but right. Todd's like, "Come on, man, you got the space." So we did. We, you know, uh, he rented in August, and by September, like the late September, we were rolling, and we were doing um, Ming and Mike out of there. Yep, yep. And we called it Titan's Tower. We called it the Secret Headquarters. Yeah. It was, so um, there's a new name for it. Uh, our friends from uh, the PBR podcast gave it to us. They they said, "Oh, you were out of Fraudulent Studios." <laughs> so here's here was the the backstory to that. <laughs> Guy didn't actually own the building anymore, yeah. anymore, and it was owned by a consortia up in um, North Jersey. Okay, and they had no idea what was going. They were they were waiting to tear the building down for like three years to get zoning in Red Bank. So they had no idea people were in there. We were squatters. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. You were, you were uh, paying rent to a squatter. Kind of, right? No, he owned the building at one time. 
and he was renting it out without these guys knowing oh, about weird. it. Uh, it's very strange. So uh, we're like, what? So it, oh, uh, it, it turned out that uh, we got a cease and desist. We, we go, hey, how you doing? Uh, we found out that you're squatting in our place. Mm-hmm. Get out. Oh, mm-hmm. man. So, and this is January? Oh, my god! January, February. They said you had to be out by February 20th. I was, uh, I had, we've got the stuff on the walls. You yeah. take yeah. a look around. Yeah. It's pretty nicely uh, appointed, wouldn't yeah. you say? Oh, my All god. this stuff was on our walls. So and this is there's some uh, one of a kind stuff in here for sure. So, every fan you guys touch on every fandom. We and- hope uh, we we miss Doctor Who, but Doctor Who actually got some books. There Doctor we go. Doctor Who books over there. there we go. And, so, and there's time. There's time. I know we've got you, plenty of. There's time. still little spaces. <laughs> not too much, not but too yes. Much. But you're right. Like I, just looking around, and I know uh, we've got some film of this too. Like there is some like one of a kind stuff, some signed mm-hmm. stuff, yeah. some. Stuff you're not gonna find anywhere else. No, I so, can't get enough of the lightsabers. Yeah. I don't know why I'm so attracted to the lightsabers. They're beautiful. That's they, they are. So, so Arby, those are all Ming. Yeah. Um, <laughs> actually, so are the samurai swords. One of them I gave to Ming for Christmas one year. Ah, uh, I gave, the, yeah, nothing, the Michonne sword. Nothing says that. No, no, Mich- uh, Michonne sword. Ming actually bought. Uh, somebody came into the stash. Oh, and like, hey, I want to sell a Michonne sword, and I'm like. We don't really sell weaponry <laughs> yeah. here. And Ming's like, I'll buy it. Like, right, cool. I guess we buy weaponry, though. <laughs> no, well, no, Ming did. No, yeah. don't buy it. Yeah, like, yeah. We don't buy it, but Ming do. So, um, But so, anyway, so you had all this stuff in that space. Yes, and so I like grabbed it, and I'm like, let's get the hell out of yeah. Dodge. So um, we uh, and our, our friend Todd was like, uh, oh, he's like, oh, my God, this is this is kind of insane. He's like, fighting with the, the landlord, trying to get his deposit back. <sighs> Guy's like, eh, drank it up. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, eh. So um, then we started looking around, and, and uh, Todd, unfortunately, um, Todd's, a, Todd's a great guy, yeah. um, but gets really busy and gets into his projects. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, uh, he's out of the loop for a while. So yeah. we're like, we got to move on this. And, you know, because we had some momentum going. Yeah. And, and we could, you know, and we did um, record out of the back of the stash. I kind of liked having our own space, right? Yeah, so I said, yeah. "Let's let's find a place." So we did, and we did it because we're geniuses. Right in the middle of shooting season seven of Comic Book Man, <laughs> I'm like, oh my god! And um, I had to I had to get out of my house mm-hmm. because a bulldozer was coming to tear it down. Oh and, my yeah. goodness! Sandy, beautiful, love wow. Sandy. Um, Sandy yeah. just all destroyed my house. Oh, yeah. And we have to rebuild. What a bitch. I know. She was. She um, was. So in the middle of all this stuff, I'm moving in here, moving into a new house. You know, it's just mass oh, man. pandemonium. Gosh. So, yeah. So, But we got here, and we started to just put this stuff up. And as you can see, we've got entirely too much stuff in here. Our next room, which is going to be our unboxing room, uh-huh. when we get our video feed up and everything going. Excellent. Thank you. Um and we have to have another table made. This is a custom made table, which is nice. great. Yeah, I, I Thank like you the so uh, much. I love Tower of Powers. Yeah. Nice, pretty right. Ernie O'Donnell did all this. Nice. Rick Darris from Clerks did this table. It's beautiful. It's good to it's know nice, people. Man. Yes, and uh, so and and we put together a wish list of people we would love to uh, coordinate with and yeah. you know have sponsor us and and be you know like there for us and uh death wish coffee was at the top of the list well we 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 couldn't be happier because again we love as a coffee company aligning ourselves with people and groups of people that we feel you know are already caffeinating themselves yes and like podcasters that's exactly what that is and what a great idea to open your doors to not just because you can pod. What's great about podcasting? You can podcast anywhere. You know, yes. I mean, especially now, even with smartphones. You know, like yeah. I could take out my iPhone and I could record on a SoundCloud app. You know, and, oh, yeah. and just put it out if I wanted to. But to be able to open your doors and have great, you know, all this amazing tech that is just at anybody's fingertips, and teach people how to do it too, yeah. to get people like you know comfortable on a microphone. It's it's I like I hope I hope you guys just this becomes a juggernaut that you you see it in your head because thank you i i do too and you know what in, in my head i'm seeing you know uh death uh, death wish coffee 
Yeah. You, you guys having your own little store down at the oh, end. Uh, love it. Down in, in the lobby. That would be fantastic. Yeah, I love How it. awesome would that be? I love little it. kiosk, you know. <laughs> We're going to send you, um, I'm sure you probably have already thought of this anyways, but I mean, once you get your unboxing thing all up and running, we're going to send you all of our merchandise to unbox. Oh, that's fantastic. Because, I mean, why not? We come out with some really fun things. I got, I got some stuff up my sleeve. Fantastic. Yeah, you guys cool things still coming. haven't implemented the death wish death list. <laughs> that's not true. Yeah, yeah, we, we did. We actually just killed the death wish death list. We did. Yeah. Not the way that you originally. Okay. No, this is So here is, here's the, here's the story behind this. A couple of years ago, we're hanging out with you. And uh, you had the most amazing idea to start a Death Wish death list. And your idea was like the Deadpool. Yes. Right. So <laughs> yeah. so we start listing people that we either hope or we think is going to die in a very soon sense. Yes. Yes. And uh, we liked that idea. We did that for a little bit, though. We did it for two episodes. Right. And then the- it got really morbid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, we're pretty much wishing death upon people. Which- yeah. What's what's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> so then we, you know, I mean, we ran out of people pretty much. Like, who do we actually want to die? Yeah, and it's like, Ser- you know what? Not that many people. Seriously, I could have called in. I mean, <laughs> I, when, darn it! When, I, I, it's not even a list anymore. It's more like. I should have a list of people I don't want to die. Right, right. <laughs> Everybody else is on the other one. And uh, so then we then we we kind of fashioned it in a different way, and we did a death list where we would talk about some notable people who happened to die that week. And we started this last year um, when it seemed all of our heroes were just dying. Oh my god, wasn't last year suck? Yeah, like it's crazy. the last 2 years pretty much, but yeah, last yeah. year. For a while too we were like, "Oh no, it's just because we have more news sources and we're just hearing about it more." And it's like, "No, no, there was just a lot of a people lot dying." A lot of people dying. No, these people piss god off. What's yeah. going on? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Uh, just just recently we we actually got rid of that segment because uh it was just it was it was weighing on the show. It, was, <laughs> oh, it would be well we would we would do it. We it did kill it. the momentum. For yeah. Yeah, okay. we would, I got gotcha. you. We I'm... would do it between a very inspirational part of the show and then like a very silly part of the show. So like it like sandwiched in between inspiration and silly was Dead. And David Bowie had died. And it's like, oh now I just want to go like, cry. Even, like... <laughs> even the bump into the death list yes. was, you know, taps. Yeah. On the bugle, so yeah. it was like you instantly got into this, like, oh shit. Yeah, there's no way to make taps like even jazzy, you know. No, no, nope. there's no. nothing you can do about that. So yeah, we we ended up moving on from the Death Wish Death List just just to kind of keep the show more geared towards what we want it to be, or you know, you know not. You know, encouraging people to kill themselves. Yeah, yeah, let's make yeah. a headline, everybody. Oh my um, god. Oh, sorry. I didn't. I didn't mean for it to go there. <laughs> we'll I thought right. it'd be, you know, what something really kind of funny. It's like, all right, this bitch who cut me off the other day, <laughs> yeah, she's on the death wish. Yeah. Le- that that probably be the that 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 would probably be a good way to go about it because it it holds some an- anonymity. Yeah, you know, it just that that, that person could... who's driving that car doesn't actually have a name or face yet. So Very you could wish death upon them without really like being too evil about it i will say though um now when on our weekly show that we do on facebook live um we have kind of taken that idea and ported it over into this new segment that we do called the roast and the roast is basically something in pop culture that pisses the absolute fuck out of dustin and i and (laughs) so and so like we just bring it up and we just like one of the times he hides it from me like don't don't read it don't read it i want to i want to break the news to you i want to see your face when you're reacting to it like one of the first ones we did was fidget spinners you know and just like the 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 way that those have just taken over everything and there's just all these fidget spinners and so and we it within the roast we usually get to a fever pitch where we're like, just go kill yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, so, so we have we have ported that into that, which is good. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I get worked up sometimes. Yeah, it's 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 okay. We get it out. We That's... get it all out. That's what podcasting is all about. What what, what pisses Mike Zapsick off? Uh, just about everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you listen to guy? Ming Chen, just about everything. Uh, bad Jersey drivers. Yeah. Uh, you mean Jersey yeah. drivers. <laughs> well, there are about four of us who can actually drive and use blinker. Yeah, you know, we we actually use blinkers in the appropriate way. Right. 
So as uh, soon as I got into Jersey, I did a two lane slide. Jersey slide. Uh, good man. Felt yeah. good. It felt really good. Feels feels really good. Um. But you know, I mean, again, that's about that's what podcasting's about. It's about getting it out, getting sure. get, getting it off yeah. your chest, and that's why this is so amazing. And you guys have been running now for a little bit, and it's been great. I see a ton of people coming in here. We've got a, a bunch, a gazillion people. No, not a gazillion, but we've got people in here. And it's the really cool thing about this is that it's made me up my game. Mm-hmm. Because I usually rely on Ming to handle the tech stuff. Right. And Ming's off at Comic Cons Mm -hmm. a lot. A lot. And sometimes, many times, without me. You know, usually we're, you know, hey, it's a pair. And if, yeah, I know. But then then you hear uh, Johnson going, oh, you can't separate those two homos, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, (laughs) oh my God, Jesus. And I'm like, Brian, Brian, do you really? Brian, if you're listening, get new material. Well, no, (laughs) because if it works, if it ain't (laughs) broke, seriously, if it ain't broke, don't (laughs) fix it. And if it works, keep pounding it. And seriously, you know what, Brian, we we don't like the word homos. Come on, what's the matter with you? Yeah. It's homosexuals. Exactly. If you're going to make a slur, use the whole word for (laughs) God's sake. Then it's not a slur, right? You can't use the whole word and have it be a slur. That's... I. You're you know what the point of the slur? All right. Well, your your <laughs> logic is indefatigable. Okay. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, I, it's it's such a great, I think, thing to have. And uh, you guys do a lot with podcasting, not just you know here, but I mean, you guys, like you said, you do the conventions and stuff, and um, it's a lot sp- spun out of Secret Stash and AMC's comic book. Absolutely. Men. And, um, can we talk about comic book man for a hot minute? Sure can. Yeah. I want to dive into that. Cause... Is that what pisses you off this, no. <laughs> this week? This week, those scumbags on comic book they're, man. They're freaking <laughs> coming back on television again, February twenty fifth. What the hell? <laughs> well, thank you for the plug. That was not even ham fisted. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know generally, uh, you know what I've watched. I've watched the show a lot. Um, but I don't know how it all got started. I don't know. Oh, the secret origin? I don't even origin? know how you and Ming even became buddies or like, I don't. I Good don't, questions. I don't well, know how That still hasn't started. happened. No. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> We've gotten to where we don't hate each other right now. It's good. We're, we're working our way up. No, the, um, the essential thing is uh, AMC had Walking Dead. Right. Walking Dead was a huge hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're like, oh, my God, this is fantastic. Yeah. And Walking Dead, for those of you out there who don't know, sprung from a comic book. Yep. Robert yep. Kirkman and uh, Charlie Adler and Tony Moore. I can't yep. forget to say Tony Moore because he, s- he will sue me. He will get mad. <laughs> yes. Please, please don't I Tony don't Moore. need another lawsuit. Uh-huh. On my hands. <laughs> um, so that was a comic book before it was a television show. Still is a comic book. Still it's going still, strong. It's still going amazingly yeah. yep. strong. So, uh, but someone at AMC said, we got to find something that can keep these people around Mm. when Walking Dead's not on. Right. So they said, let's find something comic centric. So they went to um, Charlie Corwin. Is it Charlie Corwin over at, uh... yeah, it was Charlie Corwin over at um, Original Media. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's who it is, Charlie Corwin. Or was Charlie Corwin. I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm getting my Charlies confused because there's Charlie Corwin and... Uh, Good old Chuck. Uh, Chuck, Charlie. Yeah. Um, they went over to Original Media and they said, hey, who do we know in the comic book business? And they had a, um, the head guy had a friend, Elise Seiden, who was friends with Kevin because mm-hmm. um, Elise was his producer on Red State. Okay. So Great she movie. hooked him up. Great. Right? Yeah. Awesome movie. So... Okay. Um, Very, very underrated. Yes, I totally agree. So uh, Kevin sits down with Charlie and says, hey, what's going on? And Charlie says, here's here's our dilemma. We need to find something to keep people around. You know, do you have any ideas? You know, comic-centric, go. And Kevin's like, well, I always liked Antiques Roadshow. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, I'd watch that with, with my family, and Antiques Roadshow's pretty much a classic. So why not? I used to get really jazzed when they'd bring a toy or a comic book on there. Totally, yeah. those are always why my not, favorite episodes. Exactly. Yeah. Why not do that specifically? You know, aimed at that. Just yeah. nothing but 
toys, comics, and set it inside of a comic book shop. Yeah. You know, people are always coming in, wheeling and dealing. Hey, I've got an Action Comics, you know, 23. What do you give me for it? You know, you, you can have, like, a, a little bit of history, a little bit of comedy, a little bit of, hey, what's going on? Right. Yeah. And so they're like, that's great. Let's do that. And uh, so they, they started to, to roll that out. And they said, well... Here's the bitch. Um, we're going to have to put together sizzle reel for AMC to take a look at. And uh, most of our money is going to be eaten up by the location fees. He's like, what do you mean? He's like, well, we got to find a comic book shop. And Kevin's <laughs> like, well, I own a comic book shop. He's like, yeah. why don't you lead with that? What's the matter with you guys? <laughs> you own a comic book shop? All right. And use the guys down there and, you know, film you a sizzle reel. So they did. And, they, and Kevin said... Just to get a taste of what goes on, listen to Tell Him Steve Dave. It's a right. podcast that you know two of my closest friends do with uh, another guy, Brian Quinn. So, you know that's right. that's them, and and Walt talks about you know the ins and outs of the comic book shop all the time. Oh yeah, bitching about customers, you know the whole nine yeah, yards. Yeah, so um, they did that, and they're like, "This is the show," and Kevin's like, "Well, go you." Sh- uh, another element was you go around, you find like the wackiest comic shop guys, right? And they're like, "No, th- these guys, yeah, <laughs> these are the guys you we want on the show." And so when we did the sizzle reel, we actually they they did have a note. They're like, uh, "How about bringing in a woman, you know, just to to break up the sausage fest?" Uh-huh. Yeah. So uh, we brought in this woman Zoe. She was very nice. Yeah. But um, there was no chemistry. Right. You know, you got four guys who have known each other for like 20 years. Yeah. I, I was a reservist before I was an employee of the stash. I've been uh, working there since 2000. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and it was only supposed to be like a, a two day out of the month gig. And yeah. Some, somehow I parlayed that into a full time job. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, it's a way to do it. Yeah. You got to make yourself <laughs> indispensable and then you're in. That's what I did so. at Death Wish. So. Eh, good man. <laughs> see? People following in my footsteps. Um, and Kevin was just like, this is. Uh, so we had. The, I'm sorry. Kevin didn't say anything. We had the, the, uh, the girl Zoe come in. No chemistry. And AMC said, um, we love everything about it except for the girl. Let's get rid of. The girl. Uh-huh. These guys have chemistry. They've known each other for God knows how long. Let them go. Yeah. yeah. So we did season one, and season one, uh, I found out later on our, our showrunner. How did you guys feel about being on camera right off the bat? Did that uh, wig you out at all, or it takes some getting used to? To be honest with you, Definitely. yeah. But it it was never. Here's how it went down. I we all got phone calls. Kevin's like, "Hey, you're gonna be on TV." Not like, do you want to be on TV? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be on TV? It's like, cool. All right. All right. Because yeah. you never say no to Kevin Smith. Yeah. Right? You, you just don't. Anyone who says no to Kevin Smith. Regrets it. Yeah, exactly. And there's <clears throat> multiple stories out there Why, of doing that. Why does he beat people up? No. Because, <laughs> no, <'cause, laughs> no, because he, goes, he goes out and makes something awesome and they yeah. go, God damn it, why didn't I say yes? Yeah, yes, yeah. that's exactly what you yeah. do. Lo and behold. Yeah, yeah. and I, I've never said, you know, Kevin says, he, you know, I need an alpaca. All right, you got an alpaca. Yeah, you got an alpaca. <laughs> sure thing, buddy. <laughs> um, but uh, he had to convince Walt, because Walt's like, I don't want to be on TV. And Walt was like, it's, this is, I don't want to be snooky. Right. You know? No one wants to be snooky. <laughs> snooky sucks. So I um, usually get Snooky and Walt confused, actually, a lot. And then, oh yeah. wow! Yeah, I'm, I'm, I hope he doesn't listen to this one. Um, uh, no worries, because Walt doesn't even listen to his own podcast. Uh, yeah. So it's I think okay. we're safe. I think we're yeah. safe. Um, but he didn't want to be Snooky. Brian was like, "Cool." He's like, "All right." Tell him Steve Dave came about because, um, and this is something that Brian had, had actually talked about at length at our last Comic Con, New York Comic Con. Uh, panel yeah we did the comic yep man and he said that you know um there was he was at the lowest point in his life right before tell him steve dave and he was thinking he, he was just trying to figure out a reason not to kill himself yeah so um tell him steve dave came along and they weren't quite as um regimented as they are now mm-hmm. then they were there right. was six months between the first one and the next yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. But then they started doing it on a more regular basis, and it became therapy for, for Brian. And just to see the fans of Tell Him Steve Dave out there, all the, the they call them ants, mm-hmm. yep. which 
<laughs> to me is like, wow. Okay, that's they like it. Uh, they love it. Yeah, they love they being, like it. They, they're they're digging it, and I'm like, you, and I tell people, and I myself am an ant because an ant is anyone who is like giving them money for a product. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm very much an ant. I've given them a lot of money for uh, stuff that I bought from them. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I, I, you know, I got patches and stuff. And uh, as a matter of fact, I had for wardrobe, I asked them if I could wear a Tell Them Steve Dave shirt, uh-huh. um, a Four Color Demon shirt for the podcast segments. Right. And Brian's like, I'd love it. That'd be great. But um, Kevin killed his shirt that he wanted to wear. Uh-huh. And so he he wore that one, and I'm like, I just bought stuff from you guys. <laughs> That's now I have no more. I have no idea what I'm gonna wear now. God damn it! So I had to wear an I sell comic shirt, and people are like sucks. I sell comic sucks. I'm like, all right, whatever, whatever. <laughs> so anyway, um, and uh, so yeah, that that's he was that low. Yeah. yeah. And then you know, comic book men came along, and he's like. It's an extension, and I mean Brian is is bar none, bar anyone else on the I have ever met on the face of the planet, is one of the quickest wits I've ever met. <laughs> yeah, and it shows too, yeah. both uh, on the podcast and on the show. And it helps that he has no filter. Yeah, yeah. Although he's got a slight filter because uh, last year while we were filming. Mm-hmm. I decided to turn my filter off. Uh oh. Yeah, I know. And uh, <laughs> our showrunner was like, "You know, it's app. I've never had to cut out so many uh, uses of the word douchebag." <sighs> so yeah, I was, I was like, "Douchebag, douchebag, <laughs> douchebag." Um, I was like, "The Inuit." Now we too, have and... to cut out those douchebags. <laughs> nah, so, oh nah. God, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to curse. And... <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking this is about death this wish so fucking coffee. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, good right. deal. We'll be all right. <laughs> we, so, can, we, we can acknowledge as a as a whole that douchebags do exist. They do. Oh my God, yes, very much so. So Brian <laughs> is one of the quickest wits, and uh, like, it just it boggles your mind mm. when you're when you're sitting down and talking to him, and he's got. This one, and it's incredible. It's one of the the things that I am in awe of, and I'm so grateful I don't have. But he can sit down with either one of you guys Mm -hmm. for five minutes, talk to you, yeah, and find out what you are most embarrassed by or afraid of, (laughs) and he will hammer you to shit with it. Oh man, challenge accepted. Oh dear God, no, you don't want that. (laughs) Seriously, and I I didn't have a thick uh, thin skin. To, all right, I did have a thin skin. I didn't have a thick skin to begin with. Yeah, but being on camera with Brian for like the first two seasons was like, all right. I was just sitting there like, oh, you guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So season one gets filmed. It's obviously successful. Yes, Very we successful. we got numbers that we were. But let me preface that by saying that there was a huge tempest in a teapot. Thing going on because they named it Comic Book Men, right? right? And they were trying to capitalize on Mad Men, yeah. So right. and they couldn't call it Breaking Comics because right. you know, yeah. I mean, so they were trying to capitalize on a you know existing show, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, originally it was called The Secret Stash, but for copyright reasons, it couldn't be used. Okay, mm. okay. Uh, we were gonna call it Fanboy Pickers, Fanboys, and then it was gonna be Comic Men, yeah, and. Brian Johnson rightly pointed out that, hey guys, if we call a comic men, they're going to expect stand up comics. Stand up comics, right. yes. Yeah. So how about we throw the word book in there? <laughs> yeah. You know, that's ah, it, it's it's super smart. And uh, so a lot of people were like, you guys don't like women. You know, this is a very misogynistic show. The whole nine yards. And I was like, that's absolutely not true. All f- well. Four of the five comic book men are married, mm-hmm. and uh, our our wives are lovely women. We, yeah. you know, nothing but the most utmost respect, and we don't treat women like garbage. Right. So I I never understood where that came from, but it's, it was it, we got hammered with it. It's the boys' club mentality. Any any time in any kind of pop culture when it's ju- and you see it in movies, television, um, you know, even just groups of people, like when it's the bo- when it's a bunch of boys together, you know, immediately it's oh, you guys are anti women, especially if you have no filter, and that's a lot of what you're doing. Yeah, and so I mean, I, I think I think that's just a trigger 
for people. And I'm not saying that, you know, there are there are groups out there that that is the 100 percent truth. of. Oh, of course, they're called neo-Nazis. But but yes, you know, (laughs) but but I mean, and the other the other side of it is up until recently, up until this this resurgence of geek culture, geekdom, Mm -hmm. if we as we can call it, uh, you know, when I was a kid and going into comic book shops, if I saw a girl in there. Yeah. It didn't I, I would be in the wrong place. <laughs> like, yeah. like, so I mean, you know, it was a boys' club. So yeah. I, I think that that that's unfounded. And I, we get a lot of women coming into to our comic shop and treat them with nothing. Again, respect. I mean, yeah. that's that's what it is. They're. Uh, I don't care what gender you are. I don't care if you're. I and. I, um, no, I'm not going to tell that story because it's, it's it's just a little weird. Um, no, here, here's the thing. A couple of – it was a month ago. Uh-huh. Um, a guy comes in, and he's obviously a guy, comes in in a dress. All right. Didn't react. I yeah. mean, it's like that, yep. you, cool. where, you, you do you. you. Yeah. yeah, you. Yeah. Great. Exactly. And uh, I think he was looking for a reaction from me, and he got nothing. Yeah. So – and it was like – Dude, whatever. Whatever. It's whatever. Cool, man. Nice dress. Yeah. No, I didn't even tell him that. I, I, I like the I cut. think that could be misconstrued. It's like, yeah. What are, what are you saying that I'm, this is the wrong color for me? Yeah. That was wrong with you. <laughs> it's like, uh, but it, anything goes. I mean, comic books, comic book shops are the place that um, you can you can go now, uh-huh. and it doesn't matter. Right. It's a, that, it's always been like a sanctuary. It totally. should be. Like, there there have been those comic book shops. Right. And the place that was before us was one of those places when it was uh, comicology. Yep. It was very much looking down your nose at, um, oh, you read Gen 13. Oh, uh, right. But the, to yeah. be honest with you, the guy who was uh, running comicology was pretty much a Simpsons you know, yeah, comic yeah, book guy clone. Yeah, yeah. Right. Literally. Yep. He was just that. You know, same ponytail. I, exactly. I, yes. <laughs> I grew up with the same thing. We had a our, um, now we are so lucky in Saratoga to have the Comic Depot because it is one of the greatest shops ever. Hands down. But it's 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 like it's almost a miracle that we have a comic book shop that nice. But when I was a kid, we had a comic book shop that again in Saratoga Springs, which was which was, you know, a, awesome that I, I could just take Spa get on my City. bike. Mm-hmm. Go to the, go to the comic book shop, yeah. but it was that. It was a guy who not he only, was. I remember him. He not only looked down at you, he was a DC clone. So therefore, any Marvel book that was doing well, or if you walked in there now, I as a kid when I like the first book I ever picked up was Cable. I just thought oh, okay. I thought Cable was. A, a mercenary from the future with a gun, you know, a, a humongous glowing gun and, and a glowing shit. eye. I was like, this guy is the, the coolest thing in the world. Like, any Marvel book you'd pick up, he'd almost drum you out of the store because it was Marvel. If it wasn't DC, get the hell out of my store kind of thing. Doesn't yet, he understand that that's 50% of his sales? At that time, because this was this was right before Image, like, became a thing. So it really was 50% mm-hmm. of his sales. And, like, it, it boggled my mind. And it eventually failed because yeah. he shot himself in the foot. And nowadays, I, I mean, I, I think those shops are probably very few and far between because the, the industry is so much more, I wouldn't say lucrative, but at least aware yes. because it's everywhere. You know, it's, it's I, all, every I think big... we've seen the comic book industry take a, like a liberal turn as well. Yeah, very like, much so. And I, for the better, you yeah. know, um, and that kind of leaves like a an open mind policy. Yeah, sure. Which is which is great. Um, and that's uh, that's the way it should be. A comic book shop should be a place where the people who usually aren't accepted in society can go and fit in, right? Yeah, yeah. Your geek, your outcast, your nerd, whatever you want to call them, can hang out there and and suddenly be the popular kid. Yeah, yeah. and be on equal footing with. Every single person, including the people behind the counter. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yes. my opinions are no better than somebody else's. I've been reading much longer than a lot of people, right. especially you know, even you guys. I've I've been reading comic books totally. for uh, you know twenty years longer. Yes. It doesn't make my opinions more valid. No, you just have a little bit more information. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, I've seen you know 
stuff come up. You yeah. Know, I, I watched the rise of the, the new Teen Titans. And, yeah. You know, they, they were, you know, neck and neck with X-Men. Yeah. Back yeah. in the day. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. Do you see, I, I mean, and this is probably a double-edged question because because of the success of, of comic book men affecting the store, but do you see in the, like, the store, the store, we're as a as a worker at a comic book shop. Mm-hmm. Do you see a, a huge shift in not sales, but at least interest? We get right. people coming in who are fans of the show, mm. and that's that's amazing, right? Yeah. You know, hey, can I get a, a photo with you? Absolutely, yeah. You, you know, it was really funny walking behind uh, Ming the the second time we came into the shop, and you know, Ming's Mister Mayor saying hi to everybody. Hey guys, thanks thanks for coming to the shop and. And and I'm following him, so I'm a few steps behind him. Mm-hmm. And the guys that he just said hey to were like, "That's the guy from the show. That's him. <laughs> yeah, that's him right there." <laughs> I don't think we should ask him for an autograph. No, I don't think we should. I think he just doesn't want to be bothered. Let's, uh, let's do it anyway. All right, no, no, yeah. no, no, don't do it. You're gonna embarrass me. <laughs> and you guys, you guys are so gracious with it, which is great. Um, and it's it's gotta be it's gotta be nice to be able to do. A show like Comic Book Man, which appreciates and lauds the industry, you know, I mean, like you're you guys are not only having a good time and, you know, getting some celebrity guests in there and stuff like that. But you guys are are building up this this comic book industry as well on top of it. That's what we hope. That's what um, it wasn't like our main goal. I guess our main goal was to stay on the air long enough to be able to. be able to celebrate something that we love as much as we do. Right. I mean, Walt and I have been, you know, collecting and reading comic books since the 70s. Mm-hmm. I mean, the early 70s, since I could read, and I taught myself to read through comic yeah. books. Uh, Walt's the same. He had a, a, you know, a bunch of coverless books in a big box at the foot of his bed. Even before he could read the words, he looked at the pictures. Yeah. yeah. So this, uh, I, of course, it's... It's kind of, you know who I, I look at, uh, like, Stan Lee as the ambassador of the comic book world. Totally. And if we can do even, like, one one-hundredth of what he's done, mm-hmm. then I think the show's a success. I think so, too. So, I, I mean, th- that's how I, I, I think of it. Has, has the show changed your life at all? No, not at all. <laughs> no, of course. I, I get to travel a lot more. Yeah. We go to, like I said, Ming and Ming and I go to cons together. Mm-hmm. We, we bring Brian Johnson with us, um, which is fantastic. I got to, to take my family to Scotland. Oh, that's so cool. Amazing. It is. It's, it's just tremendous. I, something that I've always wanted to do is travel. And um, I've been going around the country, seeing places that, you know, I mean, Indianapolis. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like. Not one of your vacation spots, right, but hey, yeah. hey, let's go. Yeah. In about two weeks, we're going to Toledo, Ohio. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know if you guys watch MASH reruns. I, I, well, I, I watch MASH, yeah. but yeah. Oh, Of course. Yeah. I want to go to Tony Paco's, yeah. man. Do yeah, it. Tony Paco's. Do it. Yeah, that's what we're that's, damn that's straight. A, that is excellent. I hated MASH. Ugh. Eh, Get out. You're not <laughs> the... <laughs> There's the door. <laughs> um, uh, through it all. I mean, you're, you're, you're working at the shop, you're, you're living the life, and then you're on television, you're, you're portraying the life, you're podcasting, you're traveling, you're, you're appearing at conventions. Mm-hmm. Um, we got to know, what fuels you to keep going with that? What, fu- what, what takes it and, and fuels you to get up, keep pushing, and keep, keep doing all of that? Death Wish Coffee, oh, of course. No. Come on. <laughs> this has been a commercial <laughs> break. Now back to your regularly scheduled program. No, not at all. Uh, the thing that, I, you know, uh, meeting our fans, mm-hmm. uh, having people come up to us, and this has happened more than once. We've had people just be like, you have no idea what you've done for us. Um, there was a group of veterans uh, who, who met for um, counseling for PTSD, it was a group. Yeah. And um, afterwards, they were they all got together and they're like, "Well, what do you guys like?" You know, and they're they're all talking. And comic book men came up. <clears throat> it's a bunch of um, military veterans right. who who seen some shit, and they started talking about comic book men. 
and they all met to watch comic book men. Wow. Mm-hmm. And just sit and talk some of their problems so through. Cool, yeah. It was. I was like, holy shit, this yeah. is fantastic. And um, because they were out in the the Midwest and comic book men came on a little bit earlier. So they would go to their meeting on a Sunday and then go to a bar, sit around, hang out, have a couple of drinks and then just watch us and then talk about like the stuff that they love, like comic books and toys. And, you know, going to the land of nostalgia as a as a break. Exactly. And I think that that's what uh, I think that's what comic book man gives people. I think that's what comic book book. Comic books, books. Yeah, yes, it give, gives people, and sure. it takes you back to uh, a time when you know you flip baseball cards. When you know the the only thing you had to worry about was like a science test on Monday, yeah. right? You know, comic books, it, it touches the kid inside of you. Yeah, I mean that's the one thing my father always wanted me to read. It's like, no matter what you do, you read. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it helps you. No matter what you read, and comic books were something that uh, he always bought for like long trips. Because my father, um, he wasn't Irish, but he was Catholic, and so he had six kids. My yeah. poor, poor mother, um, <laughs> <laughs> six boys, no less. Oh man! So he would get stacks of comic books and just distribute them among us. <laughs> wow! That's so Classics cool. Illustrated, but also you know some underground stuff for my older brothers, and yeah. you know Superman and the Avengers for me, and my you know a couple of my closer younger brothers and uh we go on long trips and and read these things and pass them back and forth and it touches the kid inside of each of us yeah and i think that that's my father um he got to see me on tv my father passed away about two years ago but he got to see me on tv and uh even though he was sliding into dementia at the time mm-hmm. he was able to to be like that's my boy yeah. he's like you know he he's he's making money out of something that he's passionate about he's making a living he's supporting his family it's all he ever really wanted yeah you know um for a long time i was a chef <laughs> me and too Same you were jeff, i yeah. was yeah 15 years before i started at death Wish. god bless you so uh, you know ugh. you want to talk about like i mean hey we all know that the military vets are, are the backbone of this country oh yes but we saw I've some, seen some we, shit. We saw some shit, too, buddy. <laughs> oh, God. <clears throat> I know. Just the, the the ignorance and the stupidity of some people just Ugh. pissing you off. Ugh. Yeah. Exactly. <sighs> All right. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. So <laughs> just that took me back for okay. a second. <laughs> I know. And, and every once in a while, something will take me back. I'm like, Oh, sons of uh, I think uh, that's why we see uh, a lot of success at Death Wish because there's definitely a, a giant level of gratefulness because we all come from jobs that we were like at that state for mm-hmm. so long and now get to work this awesome job. You're living the dream. And we work so hard for it. Mm. I would kill to keep this job because it's just – it's so great. I'm going to kill Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, God, you I don't like death the way you're looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's great. God. Be afraid, Dustin. Be very afraid. <laughs> but that's that's a great thing about it. Like sometimes you have to go through that that shit to really appreciate. You know, when you finally do find success, uh, you want to just hold on to it with all your might. Tell you, Jeff. That's the that's one of the best quotes from Dracula. It was Van Helsing who said. You know, we must wade through bitter waters to get to the sweet. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Not to get to Bram Stoker. No, <laughs> that's that's great though. That's great. So, Comic Men's coming back uh, very soon, uh, February twenty fifth uh, for the second half of the season. You guys are going strong. Seven seasons, probably another seventy in you. I would think seventy seasons. You bet yeah. it. Yeah. You want to um, see comic book men in the pens? You got it. <laughs> I'm there. Ming, Ming will wear like little orange speedo depends. I promise you that. I, I, I believe it. I kind of I kind of, <laughs> I kind of think it. he already wears them sometimes. I, oh, my God. With the amount of Death Wish coffee that man drinks <laughs> and booze <laughs> and the fact that he's constantly podcasting, not getting up and taking a leak. So, yeah, he's probably doing that. Do you do you ever um, do you ever have like, I don't know, a moment where your two worlds kind of meld because you have this show that is unscripted and you guys have 
you know, incredible stuff come through the door, and you talk, you talk the the talk, walk the walk of the comic book industry. But then you work it for real. Like, are there ever any moments that you're like, man, that should be on a show? Uh, almost every week. Most times, people bring in their shit. You right. Know, <laughs> you see it. How many oh, times yeah. can I see the death of Superman? Uh, <laughs> yeah. How many? Yes, exactly. I'm asking you, folks. How many times can I see? You know, runs of Image Comics. You know, Death Blow. That, death Blow. It's like oh. Death Blow. Yeah. Like, oh man, it you blows know. all right. Yeah, yeah. It sure blows. <laughs> uh, um, but there are times when people will bring something, and I'm like, that would be perfect for the show. Yeah. And I tell them, I, I'm like, listen, here's, uh, I should get their cards, but I'm like, and and I'll I'll tell everybody, including your listeners, yeah, how to get on the show. It's really very simple. You go and. It's comicbookmencasting.com. All there one word, comicbookmencasting.com. There it is. Uh, they will put you into a queue. You have to you gotta fill out some forms. Right, you know? right. Make sure and you're not crazy. May, well, no, <laughs> trust me. Make sure oh, you're crazy. Oh, <laughs> man. Can, can I tell you, we had a woman on who sold us um, a toy. Uh-huh. uh-huh. And this is going back a season or two. Uh-huh. Okay. And she was drunk when she was on camera. Yeah. Uh-huh. And she peed herself. Oh, yay. <laughs> so that episode aired. <laughs> I mean, we were like, this is too good not to air. Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> no, we didn't have the peeing part, but right. it was like, wow, that's awesome. That'll be in a special wow. feature. Yeah. I, I wish. If we ever had, if, if AMC would ever put it on DVD. DVD, yeah, special and, features. There you go. And I, I can do the commentary. Uh, and here's where she pisses herself. <laughs> right there. There you go. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. and But that's – these people, they, they do get on there. And, uh, you'll have to do a little video. You'll have to have something you either want or want to sell. Right. Now, the more unique and the cooler the uh, backstory is, it helps your case. Mm-hmm. So, hmm. hey, come on to Comic Book Man. Hey, I, I think it, I got a thing. That'd be great. Uh, how about my Conan comic book? I got that from my mother and everything. Eh. No. Eh. Meh. Meh. Is it a meh? It's a meh. Uh, it's meh. Uh, number one of Savage Sword of Conan. Savage Sword's pretty cool. Yeah. And that's a $30 book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want some. Yeah, you, that just, book was supposed to pay for college. Yep. <laughs> didn't going to happen. I didn't go to college. <laughs> <laughs> Damn and you, Conan. <laughs> it's Yeah, seriously. I couldn't even afford a day at clown college. <laughs> Fuck. So... I'm very curious. How did you and Ming mate? Meet? Mate? <laughs> How did you mate? How did you ah. mate? Regularly mate? No, no. Here's it was um, this. We met actually through Kevin because of um, Ming was Ming had got hired, gotten hired, and I was working at the online store. Online was uh, over in Red Bank. It was in a different location. Than it is now. But Brian, w- Brian Johnson was running the place uh-huh. and with an iron fist. <laughs> um, but he had a whole bunch of us there, and I was working at the store. Walt said, hey, you should have Mike work with you. And he's like, yeah, it's a good idea. I knew the product, so boom. So uh, Ming was actually moving here to, to do Kevin's graphic design full time. Yep. So um, he came and... We'd met, and uh, I don't think Ming liked me very much in the beginning. <laughs> and uh, which all is, good relationship. Which, so. which is fine, you know, because I was like, oh, who's this guy? Yeah. You're trying to take over my place. Um, <laughs> so uh, it was, you know, back and forth. We didn't know each other all that well, but when um, we were on Tell Him Steve Dave a couple times, and – um, Kevin was doing this morning show. Mm-hmm. He was doing this morning show, and he was trying to do it every day. Yeah. And so he had content to do. Uh, he was going away. He was doing like a three-week jaunt someplace. So uh, Brian Johnson, Brian Quinn were filling in, and it was it got to be too much for him. So Johnson's like, fuck this noise. I'm, I'm done. He, he did like – he did what he always does. Right, He's like, right. I quit. And uh, – <laughs> So later uh, nerds. Exactly. <laughs> See you later, douchebags. Um so he says, Hey, let's have Ming and Mike do it. Let's watch this fucking train wreck. And uh, so we got tapped to do it. Wow. And so we're like, eh, fuck it. Let's Yeah. I know comics. You know something, I guess. Maybe. <laughs> um let's let's talk about comics. So 
Uh, next day we came in, we we were doing it, and it turns out that we had uh, we had pretty good chemistry. Yeah. yeah. And people were like, "Hey, these guys are good. They're they don't suck." Yeah. That's like it, at least it beats listening to Brian Johnson bitch about you know <laughs> having yeah. to do this show for yeah. an hour. So we we were actually doing that. We did that for uh, two weeks, and uh, when Kevin came back, he's like, "Hey, I want you guys to do a, a show for us called um, I Sell Comics." Oh, nice. Yeah. So we automatically got thrown into a podcast, and uh, effectively, from that point on, we were tell them Steve Dave's whipping boys. Oh yeah, yeah. little <laughs> bitches, you know. Oh so. yeah. <laughs> and the thing that cracks me up the most is that uh, Brian created us, so. Yeah, I'm like, you know what? You're the one that put us together. Yeah, it's your jackass. fault. Jackass. It's your freaking fault. Yeah, you did it. That's so. fun. I'm glad he did. I'm yeah. glad that, you know, you guys have stuck at, stuck it out and done everything that you've done to the point where we got to meet you guys. Yeah. And have become friends and now able to sponsor this incredible place. We I- are so grateful to Death Wish Coffee. We love the product first off. And I'm not going to go into some spiel about how, you know. Please tell me how much you love yes. my coffee. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, buy the Valhalla blend. Yeah. But, no, but I mean, it's just, I just, I, I love everything you guys do. And I think, I really think a shared universe is one of those ideas that is lightning in a bottle. And it's going to be, it's going to become everything that you hope it's going to be thank you and you guys are here you guys yeah. are you guys are here for the ride yeah we so, are for sure oh, yeah you know what we're um, sleeping here tonight <laughs> fantastic <laughs> yeah, right. already claimed... i don't have to set the alarm that's good <laughs> jeff already claimed under the table, under the table. <laughs> i'm on the table so very nice bunk like bunk beds, beds. Yeah, i love it yes, yes. Yeah, very how, good that's how we roll <laughs> that's how we roll uh one of our uh one of the mission statements that we have for shared universe is this vision is that podcasting should be accessible to everyone. Mm-hmm. And this the is truth. essentially what we're trying to build here is a clubhouse that people come in and feel comfortable in. A lot of people come in and are like, wow, this is, I, I feel like I'm in my friend's basement. Yeah. yeah. And you guys know you guys know as well as I do that a good podcast is just a bunch of people talking. Correct. And having a great conversation. Yeah. So... It, it's a conversation that you want to be a part of, and you are because you're listening to it. Exactly. I, there's so many times when I'm in my car by myself listening to a podcast, and I talk at the podcast. <laughs> you should get that checked out, Jeff. <laughs> Crap. Jeff's like, <laughs> Jeff's like, why aren't they answering me back? Yeah. Come on. Listen to me, Joe Rogan. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? Isn't it? <laughs> God. Come on, Adam Carolla. Laugh at my jokes. Yeah, laugh at my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Um, finally, uh, just so we have it on record, I it's, I know it's this easy, but um, where can people follow the podcast studio, and where can they follow you? You can go. Um, our uh, Twitter handle for this is at uh, a shared universe on yep. Twitter. Where we've got a Facebook page. Go and like it. Yep. Actually, go on to a shared universe and book a yes. podcast session with us. Ming and I both do, uh, we will sit down and walk you through the basics. You know, essentially, I am, you know, I'm the pretty face of this thing, <laughs> which is ah. so sad. I've <laughs> got to tell you, uh, we really should find somebody much better looking than me. Uh, but my beautiful wife is also a uh, partner in this. Yes. So, uh, Julia, she's uh, fantastic. Um, what we'll do is we'll sit you down and we will take you through what, what makes a good podcast? Yeah. That's essentially it. Yeah. What makes a good podcast? Not a whole lot of crickets chirping in the background, folks. Right. That's essentially it. I mean, if, if you want the the free version of what we, we tell you, that's pretty much it. But uh, we'll walk you through a podcast and then, like, walk you into a podcast. Which is great. Yes. And you get the, the services of Ming and me on your podcast for, like, an hour. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's as easy as just showing up. Yeah, which is really cool. Like yeah. you don't have to bring anything. No, you bring a should. pen. Bring a pen if you want to take notes. But yeah. otherwise, bring a personality. Yeah, yeah. Actually, everybody <laughs> has a personality. Don't you point at me? <laughs> Some of them suck, but That's everyone's true. got a personality. That's true. That's true. <laughs> oh, oh, oh you're fighting oh, words oh. from the table. Oh. Hey, come on, guys. Let's get along. <laughs> Uh, I'm like, who am I betting on here? <laughs> is there anyone to bet with? Come on. <laughs> 
okay. I'd bet on me. I'd Just bet saying. On, I'd bet on you too. <laughs> uh, I, I actually, you know what? As 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 the end cap, I'd bet on shared universe. I agree. I'd bet wow, on thanks universe. guys. Yeah, one hundred percent. You can follow Ming at Ming Chen thirty seven. Yeah, you can we follow don't Ming. need to follow Ming. Oh, you can <laughs> you can follow me at Michael Zap. There we go. Z a p c i c. Just follow me on Twitter, and uh, I usually. You know, people tweet me, I tweet them back. Yeah, nice. yeah. Twitter, Twitter. Usually Usually tweet to tweet action. Yeah. A little, little tweet, tweet on tweet. Tweet on tweet. <laughs> Love um, it. Thank you, Mike, so much yeah, for being dude. on the show. Gentlemen, thank you so much for you guys got Death Wish behind a shared universe. Yeah. I think that this is going to be one hell of a partnership. It really yeah, is. Man. It really is. Awesome. Cheers. Awesome. Button. All right, we're on Facebook Live. Hi, Facebook Live. <laughs> oh, man. Hello, Facebook Live. How are you? I love Facebook I, uh, Live. Yes. Just like that, huh? Just like yeah, just like that. So we got that's why that's that would explain all the branding and everything here. So <laughs> I get Facebook so. to freaking like be a part of this, right? Come on, Zuckerberg. I know you're yeah, watching. I know you like, got money. I know yeah. you got the money. <laughs> yeah. Does Zuckerberg do any of that anymore? Of course he does. He watches every Facebook live yeah, that and there is. When you have the number one up there, that's Zuckerberg turning <laughs> tuning yeah. in. And I know you like Asians because his wife's like a hot Asian chick. Yeah. Right, so I right. know you love the Asians, dude. Come right. on. Come on, a little love here. <laughs> a little love. Pay it forward, Zuckerberg. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, hello, Facebook Live. Uh, give me a second here. I'm, I'm loading up a couple sound effects and stuff here. But, uh, yeah, big big, you know, big day today here at the oh, Shared yeah. Universe Podcast Studio. Uh, again, thank you, thank you to everybody who's uh, followed along with us. We appreciate it. And, um, yeah, big. I appreciate every single big, one of you out there. Big time appreciate. I only appreciate a couple of you, oh, to be honest. Goodness. Maybe. All right. I mean, no that. need for you to sugarcoat anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, goodness. no need. No need for you to sugarcoat it. I, you know, I appreciate your your candidness. <laughs> what I appreciate. The rest of you could go suck an egg. Yeah. I just don't care. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm recording. All right, let's 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 start the show here. Let's see if uh, this should work here. Uh, Do you have? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I dream that he is me. You got to see that's how I dream to be. I dream I move. I move. I dream I groove. Like Mike. If I could be like Mike. Hello. Everybody and welcome to the Ming and Mike Show, broadcasting live from a shared universe podcast studio in beautiful Eatontown, New Jersey. My name is Ming Chen. I have some very special guests here, right in front of me, here to make a major announcement along with me. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, I'll just get right down to it. To my left, Mr. Jeff Ayers. Hi, the, uh, everybody. Or, or as you're known, uh, the Incredible Jeff. That's right. Yes, the Incredible I, Jeff. I, I'm like the Hulk, but smaller and less green. Unless you get him angry. Yes, and then I'm just still small and a little green. Yeah, Mr. McGee, <laughs> don't make Jeff angry. <laughs> you wouldn't like Jeff when nah, he's angry. Nah, you wouldn't. Yes. And sitting across from him to my right, uh, the amazing D Man. That's it. Is which that... which camera do I look at? Or it doesn't do matter. Well, this one this will be our can coffee cam right here. So you can look at all this. Right, you can look right. at this one's on you. All right. And okay. then there's also that one as well. All right. And then yeah, we got yeah. We're, we're full of cameras. We are full of cameras. There oh you yeah, you're supposed to hit record there on there. there. Yeah. One, so. one more camera for the mix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if uh, if you're watching Facebook Live, you already know what's going on. If you're just listening. Uh, I just uh, a very proud moment here in a shared universe podcast history. Um, we podcast because we love it, and I'm here with two fellow podcasters from the Fueled by Deathcast who also love podcasting. Well, also love podcasting as well, but they also work with a company that I love dearly, uh, a company I've loved for years. As many of you know, I, I love the fine art of coffee, coffee brewing, coffee drinking, coffee culture, and when I love something. I love this. I love to share that love with other people. Absolutely. I, I want other people to know that I love it, and I thought it was kind of a natural. It was just kind of a natural eventuality that we would collaborate at some point. So today, my friends, today to everybody watching and listening, I'm proud to announce a amazing collaboration between Death Witch Coffee Company and a shared universe podcast studio. Uh, if you would, Jeff, would you pull that string over there? Ooh. Okay. And, oh my uh, God. All right. Here and, we go. Um, yeah, wow. and uh, you know, reveal the uh, 
the exciting reveal. Yeah. Keep. Oh, oh yeah. All right. That that makes it official. That makes it official. Uh, Death Witch Coffee. Welcome. Eat, eat your heart out, Marvel. That's the best special effects I've ever seen. That was seen. really good. <laughs> no, I no. It was basically uh, I I had some old string laying around. I I t- I kind of tagged it to a pin. And I rolled it up, and yeah, I, I just unfurl- we just unfurled the Death Witch. I, I thought that here. might have been just like the perfect knot where you know he pulls it, it on. It did and look really good. It did. <laughs> yeah, if you saw that on Facebook Live, uh, you know how'd that look? Let me, yeah, please let me know. Maybe you Jeff's know. just really good at pulling on shit. I am. I, yeah, he can pull on things really good. <laughs> Wait, can I can I say shit? Is yes, that you can. Uh, okay. This is the Ming and Mike show. You can say whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah. we're from Death Witch Coffee. We, you know, obviously are just a you bunch know, of pirates. We, we got to get better at telling people that they can swear before we. I usually do. I usually do because like I don't know. I think we miss it a lot because sometimes they're like, "Shit, wait, can I say shit?" Nah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I just had that moment. I know, like, oh shit, I said shit. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, absolutely. We're already too deep. Absolutely. Whatever you do, please don't but, fucking swear. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it was really cool and just hanging and then, out um, with everybody up there. Yeah, and, and I remember you guys like, came and met me at a bar, I believe. Uh, one yeah, of, one of, we uh, went to a speakeasy. Um, yeah. Hemingways. Yes, Hemingways. Yeah. Oh, yeah. such good, <laughs> go to such place good. Hemingways. Yeah. yeah, the general manager. There's a huge. Uh, I was a fan of comic book men, but a huge Star Wars fan as well. So we were we were with fellow nerds for yeah. sure. Yeah, the they best. were they were cool too. And we we were at that hipster bar before that yep. too. I remember. Oh, Bastion. Yeah, the yeah. place Bastion. called Bastion. Yeah. Bastion yeah. is uh, one of the coolest bars in Nashville. How so. do you know all the cool coolest places I, to go? I don't I mean, get that. When you when you're really looking for something, you'll eventually find it. Yeah. So uh, I'm really into hidden bars and speakeasies. So I is just, that when you go to like a a new a, location, yeah. that's like okay tonight I will find the cool places to go. Yes, for sure. Wh- Otherwise, where, where do you start looking? I start. There are a number of sources. Uh, you know, Google, y- Google, and Yelp yeah. are the primary ones. Yeah. Um, uh, Yelp I use more as to cross check reviews. Just okay. you know, you yeah. know, you always filter out the the best one and the and the and the lowest one, and you kind of read the ones in between. Yeah. Um, you know, Google's good because they index everything. So even if there's like one offshoot article about a bar that may exist. Or not, it'll you know eventually you'll get there. Um, but there are other there are a couple of sites out there. Uh, Thrillist dot com is a really great resource. Hmm. Uh, e- there's a site called Eater dot com, hmm. yeah, I heard about which is those. awesome. Um, Eater every quarter they publish a list in every major city called the Thirty Eight Essential Restaurant List. Oh, uh, nice. Say San Francisco or New York or wherever. Oh. And you know my my goal you know within like a three day span is hit all thirty eight restaurants. But, <laughs> yeah. Have and, Have you ever been to a speakeasy that is like so secret it was hard to get into like like a like a double knock on the door and a password and like the whole night? There have been a couple of them. Um, there's one in Atlanta called the Red Phone Booth, and you need to know you literally walk into a red one of those English style phone booths, and there's a there's a telephone in there, and you need to know the right number to dial Whoa. to get in. <gasps> That's so cool. Stop. That's straight out of the comic books, yeah, right there. And I believe I got the number from Michael Cudlitz, so oh, I think you know. So that that place is pretty cool. Um, I recently went to a place in Albuquerque called the Albuquerque Press Club. It was a private club, meant only for members of the journalism community. Mm-hmm. But I but I had pulled it up in a list somewhere. Do podcasts count? <laughs> they did eventually because <laughs> yeah. uh, there was um. um so I rolled over. I was like, oh, maybe I could talk my way in. If not, then you know I'll just go to another bar. But I just got to see this place. Yeah. Right when you get up there, there's a big sign on the wall that says private club. And there's a big backlit sign that says members only. And there's all this language on there. So immediately you're intimidated. Yeah. Right. But event- I did eventually talk my way in. And then uh, I signed up for a membership. And the membership categories you could sign up for, you can sign up if you're a journalist uh, if you're, you can sign up for some kind of social membership. If you're a friend of a journalist, yeah. And then there's a communicator category. If you're a mass, uh, a person of that participates in mass communication. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm a podcaster. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on a TV show that communicates yeah. to a million people every Sunday night. So I communicate every day. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I filled out the application. It was like a sixty dollar application fee, which you know to me was nothing, huh. just to be a member of this private club. And yeah. I submitted it. Um, I got a call a week ago going, hey, we're going through your application. There was a sponsorship field that you left blank, like a sponsor. You're supposed to write somebody who was supposed to sponsor you. Oh, you like somebody who goes to that club. All right. right. Yeah, because right. He, uh, for a non-member, you can get in if a member signs you in. Right. Yeah. And then there's a limit. I think you're limited to like two outside people per night or something. Ah. But they're like, you left that blank. Could you please let us know who your sponsor is? Luckily that night, and I kept going back yeah. um, because I bought the membership, so I was under a probationary membership oh, during right. that time. 
uh, I made good friends with uh, Holly Ann Bird, who is the bartender, uh, who Perfect. also is a comedian. Oh, oh, nice. And she was a she was a big Kevin Smith fan. Uh, it turns out her dad is a big comic book men fan. <laughs> so I go. texted her. I was like, hey, I left that field blank. Are you allowed to sponsor me as an employee of the this private club? It should, club? Be, should count double, right? Yeah, and she's like, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. So I think, I think I'm in. Awesome. So I the next I'm time in. we're in Albuquerque, we'll go there. We'll list you as a sponsor. Sure. And we'll yeah. be good to go. Yeah, well, just yeah, ask, <laughs> ask, ask, ask. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, don't exactly. do that. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. But awesome. yeah, they're, yeah, I mean, they're, they're ones, you know, hidden, uh, you know, behind restaurants. And I, yeah, there's some pretty crazy ones out there. Just, well, yeah, the, uh, the knocking, you know, they, uh, they want to keep it a secret, but they also need to make money, so they have right. to not keep it so secret as to not so no one shows up. Right, right. I mean, but there have been a couple where the store hidden inside storefronts that clearly look vacant, all beat up, didn't look like there's anything in there, and you pull. Sure enough, you pull open the door, and there's a freaking bar in there. Wow, it's crazy. and it's great. It's just fun. It's fun. Yeah. That's why I love these so much. So, yeah. So I'm dabbling. I I'm too lazy to do it now, but everyone's like, you should. Put out a book or a blog or something where you list and review all the ones you that you should. Mentioned. So I always I can, tell people. I mean, it's got to be tough on your on your timeline, but uh, yeah. But again, I think you should fit it in there. Man. Again, like I mentioned at the opening of this episode, when you find something that's awesome and you love, you want to share it with everybody. Yeah, so. absolutely, absolutely. I tell people all the time, like if you're going to a convention or like <laughs> or whatever, and Ming's there, yeah, definitely at least ask him. Where's a good place yeah, to where eat should a drink? I go? Yeah. yeah. So we're back from that, and boy, what an incredible adventure that was. Whoever thought we could have so much fun in beautiful New Jersey. Right. Um I we talk about it on the show in the podcast, obviously, but I just want to iterate again how incredible it is that we have befriended people like Mike and Ming. Yeah. Um, you know, not only with their ties to television with AMC's Comic Book Men and Kevin Smith and all that, but uh, just down to earth people who really want to see podcasters succeed. I mean, that is like the definition of Mike and Ming. Yeah. What you just said right there. It yeah. Hits the nail right on the head. And uh, what they're doing at a shared podcast universe is is truly awesome and amazing. And I think we'll see something revolutionary happen there i think so too um it's already becoming a huge thing just in their community you know they, they it seems like they're pushing out a podcast every couple hours still. yeah and i think we'll see production companies like this pop up everywhere yeah. after, after they see the success of of mike and ming doing what they do there you know who just started something almost completely similar to this is adam carolla Oh, really? Yeah. Like, literally, he's got his own production company, and so he's got a studio now where he welcomes people into his studio to talk about podcast, other podcasters to talk about podcasting, talk about how to start a podcast, because he's one of those guys that's been doing podcasts forever. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like, and, and I mean, Ming and Mike, I mean, they've been doing podcasts forever, and we actually get the origin of that on this. Yeah, that was so cool. Which is fun. Um, but, uh, man, it was great being able to hang out with these guys in the studio. What a great space is a shared universe. I mean, I, we say it, we say it, uh, I think on pod, we talk about how, you know, it, y you feel comfortable yeah. there and it's because you're just flanked by every nerddom possible. All the, the cool geek stuff. And of course they, they are the comic book men. Yeah. They get the cream of the crop when it comes to geek toys, man. Yeah. They really do. Those lightsabers. Oh man. God. I can't get enough of those damn lightsabers. So cool. Um, and, but I mean, everything, everything over there is just great and it's so easily accessible. I'm going to put up the link one more time to a shared universe podcast studio. If you happen to be in New Jersey, Hit them up. Book some time. Even if you've never been in front of a mic before, they'll help you through setting up everything, and you'll walk away with your own podcast and a thirst for doing it. And uh, incredibly affordable. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it is really just chump change compared to what a company like this should be charging you to do what they do. Yeah. It's really awesome. So, I mean, if you're a first-time podcaster, you've been doing it forever. It's a space for everybody. And Ming and Mike do their podcasts out of there now. And AMC's Comic Book Man is coming back for its mid from its mid-season break, uh, season seven, which is just incredible. It's insane. Um, and Congratulations to them for staying uh, on television for so long. That's It really doesn't happen much anymore. Seven 
seven seasons. Yeah, and I'm really excited about them coming back for this midseason because uh, they've started to tease it a little bit, and it, they are. It's a celebration of the anniversary of Clerks. So they're bringing back some people from the movies and obviously Kevin talking about, you know, the inception of it and everything and uh, how cool that is. And how cool is it to, like, hang out in the secret stash? Oh, man, that's... I mean, I've been there before, but... Being there as a guest of Mike and Ming themselves, the comic book men themselves, yeah. was so cool. And two words, Surf Taco. Surf Taco. <laughs> Shout out to Surf Taco. If you happen to go to Red Bank, you have to visit Jay and Silent Bob's Secret Stash. Obviously, it's the coolest comic book shop in the world. You can go in there. You can see not only an incredible amount of comics and memorabilia, but a ton of memorabilia from Kevin's movies. Yep. In fact, uh, the last time we were down there, it was before they had expanded for the show. Right. So I remember seeing the Blunt Man and Chronic um, the mobile that they had and the script from Zach and Miri make a porno. Yeah. And I've, I've, seen, I've seen that kind of, the Buddy Christ. Yep. I've seen that kind of stuff. But this time, there's some, they had some new stuff. They have Tusk. Yeah, they have right. yeah. Mr. Tusk yeah. there. It's incredible. Like it's so cool to go in there. But then right next door is probably the best tacos I've had in a very long time. I mean, it was time. the the shells that they were using and the cheese that they piled up. And on the way there, we're like, "All right, we're gonna eat tacos, man. I hope those tacos have cheese." And boy, did they! Boy, did they! <laughs> it was so good. So shout out to Surf Taco. So you can do a one-two punch if you go, you go to Red Bank, New Jersey. You go to Jay and Silent Bob Secret Stash, then you literally go directly next door and you. Fill your face with tacos. I would do it in that order, too. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to fill yourself with tacos, be all sleepy, and then go to the coolest place on earth. Right, you know? exactly. You want to you be nice and awake, on your toes, nice and light, not full of tacos. Go check out comic books, then go next door and eat a shit ton of tacos. <laughs> so once again, um, we're really excited that this was our first spectacular of season two, our first adventure. What a great first adventure. Yep. You know, you, you don't want to start it out too crazy. Right. Like, if we started it out with the cruise, it'd be like, oh, shit. Right. How are we going to top this? We're going to gain some momentum. Yep. It's going to get nutty. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, we were welcomed into the stash. We were welcomed into a shared universe. And if, for those of you who don't know, Death Wish Coffee is a proud sponsor of a shared universe podcast studio, which means that if you do go there to podcast, you will be caffeinated the entire time you do it. In fact, you'll be over caffeinated. That's true. Like, so much so, you'll probably be anxious. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks again, guys, for watching our spectacular. We're gonna do a heck of a lot more this year. Oh, dude, we got we got great shit coming. Just wait; it's and gonna be so cool. If you're a fan of this show, you know Mr. Ming and Mr. Mike will probably pop up again at some point because we love those guys. We see them all the time, and uh, we'll definitely have them back on. Um, thanks again, guys. Thank you. This has been Fueled by Deathcast. A Death Wish Coffee Company podcast production. Thanks for listening.